Now let's dive into the innate immunity. And the innate immunity, just like the adaptive immunity, does two things in a specific order. The first thing it needs to do to protect you from pathogens, or really not just pathogens, but toxins as well, is to first thing, find the foreigners. It's racist, yeah. Find anything that's not supposed to be there. And then the second thing it needs to do is to kill them. And there's really complicated things that we can do here, but for the most part, for the innate immunity, Yes, there's some bridging and gapping between the two, but for the innate immunity, the way that it finds foreigners is by, uh, and pathogens, by using PAMPs and ligands. PAMPs are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns. I'll talk about those. Ligands uh, are another form of, of PAMPs. Those are kind of sometimes used as synonymous. Another way is by the use of cytokines. So as its name implies, cyto meaning cell, kinesis movers. Um, the other way that it helps find the foreigners, and this is kind of a, I'm gonna probably get, extend that one out a little bit further than that. Um, draw it right here, is through the use of something that it's going to get its own, it gets its own chapter and it gets its own video. The complement system. It not only helps finding them, but it also helps with killing them. So that's kind of bridging the gap between these two things here. So how do we kill them? Well, there's really two ways that the innate immunity has of killing them, aside from complement, which I've already listed. There's the uh, granulocytes. See if I. Can... And then there's the a granulocytes. Those that don't have granules. I'll talk about each and every one of these. Okay, so that's the broad stuff. Now let's kind of divulge in a little bit deeper. So PAMPs, or pathogen-associated molecular patterns. What these are is these are structures that signal that the bacteria is a bacteria, but that the bacteria can't live without. To give you an example of this, I have a human face. Yeah, I, I don't think I could exist without a face. I mean, you could damage it, yes, but at the end of the day, I need a nose to breathe, I need a mouth to eat. That would be an example of that. You can't really exist without your heart. And even if you change your heart a little bit, it's not going to function as well. So these are... These are conserved structures. And what I mean by saying conserved is that they don't change very often. These are conserved structural features of pathogens. So what would be two examples of this? Well, the lipopolysaccharides on the outer layer of the gram-negative bacterium is a phenomenal example of this. They cannot exist without it. Or if it was gram-positive, lipotychoic acid. Or um, even uh, examples would be viral glycoproteins. That's how, how our, our bodies are able to identify that. Okay, so cytokines, I'm going to switch colors back. These do two things as well. Well, actually, there, there's a lot of cytokines, and I could talk about them for a long period of time. There are these unique glycoprotein structures that are secreted by all the cells of the innate immune system, but the two, to, to start off at, at 30,000 feet, what makes cytokines important is that they do two things. They recruit more red blood cells to the area, and they cause swelling and inflammation. All right, so that's it for that. Now, complement does a lot of things. Complement not only has roles in the innate immune system, but complement has roles in the adapt adaptive immune system. And uh, to, to give it uh, at 30,000 feet, the two things that complement does that I think are the most important, at least to discuss, that it can do is the one thing that it does is it does an opsonization. It does opsonization of the bacteria or of any other pathogen really, doesn't have to be uh, a bacteria necessarily. And what this does is it makes them much more tasty to macrophages. If you want to keep it really basic, think about a donut that isn't glazed. I'm not going to eat that nearly as fast as if I were eating a donut that was glazed. And if you were to think of this at a more molecular and scientific level, think of it as the fact that you're in, we have receptors, our macrophages and other immune cells have receptors for these complement proteins, and if you have more collisions, well, the way that you would induce more collisions would be to increase the concentration. So think about that. We're in, in collision theory. We're increasing the amount of our reactant to increase the amount of product, and so that's how this works. 
Now the other thing that complement does, aside from this, it doesn't just make them tasty, it doesn't just tag them and say, hey, you should eat this. It also will kill them on themselves by the use of something called a membrane attack complex, and I'm going to abbreviate that as MAC. And what this does is this basically just pokes holes, pokes holes in the pathogens, and only in the pathogens. It doesn't, it doesn't bother with your cells. Okay, so the granulocytes are the next things that we're going to discuss here, and I'm going to go into a lot of detail on each and every one of these things. Complement's going to get its own entire video. Uh, cytokines and PAMs, I've pretty much explained them, but we'll go in depth as we progress through this uh, course. But with granulocytes, let's just go ahead and bring this down here and let's talk about each and every one of them. And then the A granulocytes and who's important and really why. Three types of each, and I'm not going to talk about how they work in, in, in grave detail. I'm going to go into the, each and every one of them individually. But for the granulocytes, this consists of what I, uh, I guess, colloquially refer to as the fills. Um, and what I mean by that is they all end in fills, and they all have granules uh, inside their nucleus. I, Wikipedia posted some really badass three-dimensional pictures of them that I'm going to show you all, which I was just thrilled by. But anyways, there's neutrophils, basophils, cinephils. Talk about each and every one of these later. And while it's not considered a fill, it is considered a granulocyte. Really driving home the point that I'm still talking about here. There's these things called mast cells. We're going to talk about everything here. Now, for the agranulocytes, there's natural killer cells. There's killer cells. There are things called macrophages, or macrophages, whatever you want to call them. Phage, phage, it's all the same thing. And one last one I want to talk about, I'll draw him to show that I'm really striving home here that there's three of him as well, are known as dendritic cells. And that's pretty much it for the innate immunity. So, um, how do we find the foreigners? How do we pathogens or even just compounds that aren't supposed to be there? And how do we kill them? That's what I'm going to talk about um, in more detail compliment I'm going to make in its own video, but for the next I'm going to talk about granulocytes and the agranulocytes of the innate immunity.